Webster was so frightened that he fainted, falling on the floor. This was the last thing he remembered until he was awakened by the night watchman. The police were called and they arrested Mike Webster. James Bradley, the owner of Pets Are People, testifies as follows. Hey, I'm a nice guy, but Mike Webster was a terrible clerk. He often arrived late and spent time in the back room when he should have been helping customers. I finally had a, to talk to him about his... about his poor performance. To my surprise, he started yelling at me and screaming at me that he worked as hard as he could. After that, I didn't want Webster to work at, in my store anymore. On that morning af before the vandalism occurred, I noticed Mike Webster by mail that he was fired. Oh, I no notified Mike Webster by mail that he was fired. I was too scared to tell him to his face. You know what I think? I don't think there was any teenager who rushed in. I think it was Webster who wrecked the back room of my shop. I think he wanted to get back at me for firing him. Exhibit A is the notice that was mailed to Webster. It was found in the pants in his pants pocket when he was arrested. A lawyer for Mike Webster has given a different side of the story. Is James Bradley the nice guy he says he is? Or is there a, a lot of customers who might want to get even with him? It seems that Bradley has a history of improper store operation. Exhibit B is a newspaper article which shows that James Bradley was ordered to close the pet shop he owned. During the time Bradley was operating his new store, he was sued three times for dissatisfied customers for selling them animals who turned out to be sickly. When the owners attempted to return the animals, Bradley refused to refund their money. Mike Webster was given the was given his side of the story. Has given his side of the story. I think fish are the most beautiful animals in the world. Don't you? I have a big tank of at home with dozens of little ones swimming around. Sure I was upset when I was fired, but I didn't shop stop but it didn't stop me from caring for the goldfish in Mr. Bradley's store. I went back to the store that night because I had forgotten to feed the beautiful fish when that crazy teenager rushed in. I just blacked out from fright. Mike Webster's lawyer has entered into evidence exhibit C. A photograph of the back room taken by the night watchman. You will note that as Webster fainted, he knocked over the fishbowl. The dead fish are lying near him. The lawyer, the lawyer stated that if Webster had faked his fainting, he would never have knocked over the fi goldfish bowl if he was pretending to fall. He was so, t he was far too fond of the fish. Mike Webster's lawyer says his client is innocent. The damage caused by an unknown teenage vandal who was an unhappy customer of the pet shop. His motive was to get back at Bradley for illegal business practices. The lawyer of James Bradley the lawyer of James Bradley claims that Mike Webster made up his story. He accuses Webster of pretending to faint. When the night watchman was about to catch him wrecking the room, there was no teenage vandal.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have just heard the case of the broken goldfish bowl. You must decide the merits of James James Bradley's claim. To be sure, be sure to carefully examine the evidence and exhibits A, B, and C. Is Mike Webster guilty as charged, or was there damage done by a teenage vandal? I think it's the teenage vandal. But let's look at the evidence, just to be sure. Okay, so... Okay, this is a note saying that he fires him. Here's the newspaper clipping and the picture of the scene of the crime. Now one thing that's bothering me is how he's laying on the ground. It doesn't look like he fainted to me. Now I've never seen anybody faint in real life so I can't be sure but I don't think people faint forward. Do they? I don't think I've ever seen anybody like faint forward. Most of the time when people faint, they fall backward. So for him to be sprawled on the floor like that, I think something more is going on than just he fainted. I think maybe he met up with this teenage vandal and there was a tussle and he lost. And he made up the whole story of he fainted just to spare the fact that, you know, he got beat up by a teenager. <laughs> That makes more sense with the picture anyway. Okay, before I read the solution, post your thoughts down below in the comments of who you think is right and who you think is wrong. Okay, here we go. Mike Webster caused the damage. Webster claimed he fainted when the teenager entered the back room, but Exhibit C shows he was lying on top of some of the papers. This would be have been impossible unless the papers were on the floor before he fell, indicating that it was Mike Webster who vandalized the back room. He pretended to faint when the night watchman arrived. I had... I was just thinking about it in the wrong light. I was thinking about, oh, he's innocent and he's just covering up something else. But no, he's guilty apparently. But, uh, I think his boss should still at least get some kind of penalty for the illegal stuff he did way back when. Um, 
But yeah, that brings us to the end of You Be the Jury. I definitely see some um, similarities between this and the Clue book, which I actually bought alongside of it um, at a yard sale a while back. Um, some of, and like um, the Clue books, some of their conclusions I don't necessarily agree with, um, but some of them are actually fun, and, but the thing is, if, I feel like if you're not solving the cases on your own, it's a pretty boring book, so unless you get really lucky and guess the exact way that the book describes how, you know, this culprit is the culprit, I feel like it gets really frustrating. So if I had to recommend a certain age demographic for this book, I would say maybe 13 and under because there really isn't that much graphic content. It's mostly just like robberies and arson and stuff. It's not all that serious stuff. Like it's, um, I'd say the clue books the clue book that I read has more violence in it than this one and I actually recommended that for like teenagers and young and preteens so I would recommend this for preteens and younger because it has like no violence in it um another um demographic that I would recommend this to is kids who are interested in law or detective work or lawyer being a lawyer or a judge or something because if they're interested in that stuff, they'll really like learning all the special terms for all the stuff, and they won't find all that mumbo jumbo e words boring like I did a couple of times while I was trying to, you know, figure out this, the mystery and stuff. So, those are my thoughts on You Be the Jury, and post your costs da 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 da. da. Post your comments down below, letting me know what you guys think. Now, I suspect that these other books in this in the series, such as You Be the Detective and Who Done It, I get the feeling those have more of a m classic mystery vibe to them. So, if we ever come across them, I guess I'll check them out. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts and readings of You Be the Jury, and I'll see you guys next time.